Hello, this is my uh, One Piece Chapter 1080 review analysis. But before we start, make sure to throw a like and hit that subscribe button, please. 1080 starts off with the cover story involving Hiyori and Koematsu. I had no idea Hiyori could do origami. Isn't it part of her devil fruit power? I'm just thinking about that Akatsuki member from Naruto Shippuden. Kone? <laughs> is that her name? Then we start off at, right off at Hachinosu. The chapter picks up fast. We get no recap, just fire. We see that the pirates from Hashinosu rally up and form a mob after seeing that Kobe, our pink-haired hero, is worth five stars. Well, that's according to Cross Guild. They think they'll get five million berry if they capture him. Kobe looks like he'll, he's seen hell. It also seems like he got somewhat of a training arc like Luffy and Wano. He still has the ball and chain on him, and he's holding on to the ball just so he can move better. We then are teased by a character who ends their sentences with Meow. It's actually Pizarro. For a while, I didn't know who it was. Later in the chapter, it's revealed that Pizarro ate the island island fruit. His power seemed to be like Pika's from the Doflamingo family. At first, I thought he had Pika's fruit. Pizarro could probably gather up all the island and turn into a humongous giant. He seems like a tricky opponent. Please, Oda, don't let Zoro fight him. The, that Pika versus Zoro fight dragged on for so long on Dressrosa. We see Pizarro with Vasco shot. We finally get to see Vasco's devil fruit. It's the Glug Glug fruit. He's a liquor human. It seems like Vasco can make bubbles with his liquor powers and write them. That power seems pretty convenient. We see him flying around on that bubble throughout the chapter. Hey, maybe he can coat Blackbeard's ship, ship so he can go to Fishman Island. Sawan Wolf is lying down asleep on top of a large portion of the city. Oda reveals Wolf has eaten the giant giant fruit. Vasco and Pizarro are going over how they finished fixing up Rocky Port. We still don't know that much context for Rocky Port, but Law, Kobe, and Blackbeard were involved. It seems to be very important if Oda keeps bringing it up. Kobe then recollects what had just happened between him and the Blackbeard pirates. Blackbeard tells Kobe he wants to make Hashinosu an official country that's recognized by the government. Kobe did probably one of the worst things you can do and bash on Blackbeard's dream. We learn that making that island an official country is one of his dreams. Blackbeard is the character that said that famous dream speech back on Jaya Mock Town. A man's dream never ends. Kobe just tried to end Blackbeard's dream. You don't do that to Blackbeard. Blackbeard will remember that. Blackbeard wants to trade Kobe. I wonder what he wants from the government. A seraphim? A Vegapunk? Kobe denies that the government would take him because he's part of sword. This is where we learn from Akuiji that marines who are in sword already submitted their resignation. They can move freely without taking orders and can pick fights with Yonkos, unlike CP0. But well, Lucia didn't follow the rules. Blackbeard doesn't seem to care about Sword. He actually seems very confident, probably because he has a former admiral next to him. We find out it was Perona who let Kobe out of the, being in prison. She wants him to find Moria. Well, we later see that Kobe released a lot of prisoners, but I didn't see Moria anywhere. What is it with everyone in the One Piece community always looking for Moria? I kept looking for him on Egghead. I thought he was there. So far, no luck. Actually, we see a map after the Wano arc, and we see where Luffy, Law, and Kid were going. Law took the northeastern path, Kid took the eastern path, and Luffy took the southeastern path. In the map, we see that Thriller Bark is right beside Hashinosu to the right. So it makes sense seeing Perona and Moria on Hashinosu, and would explain how Blackbird was able to kill Ab Absalon so easily. Absalon was probably nearby. <laughs> this will be important later in the video. <laughs> The chapter then cuts back to Kobe running for his life. We see Pizarro and Sh Shiryu. Shiryu asks why didn't Pizarro capture Kobe already? I guess Pizarro won't have any trouble since he can go anywhere on the island because of his fruit. Well, Shiryu doesn't do anything else in the chapter. Practically invisible, just like his devil fruit powers. Marines then show up at the port. We see a marine get decapitated. But he had some clay logia that let him regenerate his head. We learn later that another marine at Hachinosu has eaten the Gugu fruit, a clay human. This marine is Prince Gruz, a member of Sword. I think Gruz has awakened his fruit and is able to give other people his Logia powers. That seems pretty OP. Actually, Cracker from Big Mom Pirates would be able to do the same thing like that too. He'd be able to make a Cracker armor for people. We see another member of Sword. She's actually Suru's granddaughter. Who's the grandpa? Garp? Sengoku? Her name is Kuchaku. She reminded me of that blonde Kuja pirate, Margaret. Kuja is in her name. So Kujaku has a whip whip fruit. She's able to manipulate the buildings she hits with her whip. It seems like the buildings move to her will. I'm pretty sure whoever she whips falls under her devil fruit powers. Kind of like Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth. But instead, you have control of their will. 
This also reminds me of Suru's powers, where she can clean an evil person's heart with her washu washu fruit. Both powers manipulate the will of an individual. Kujaku can manipulate anything, though, like any object. Another marine sword member we see is Hibari. She uses a flower bullet. We actually see this used by Mads in their cover story. Vegapunk made a flower that blooms in gunpowder. He actually won a Nobel Peace Prize for it. So after she shoots the bullet, all the pirates around her were only able to shoot flowers out of their guns. How pretty. Then we get to the juicy part of the chapter. We see Garp on a ship with the dog head. He's with Helmepo and Tashigi. His ship did the coupe de burst just like Luffy's ship. I wonder if he was inspired by Luffy after seeing them escape from Water 7. Anyways, we see a cool panel where the ship is above the plaza of Hashinotsu. Well, Garp speaks his heart out and says Kobe is the future of the Marines and his beloved pupil. A very heartwarming scene. I got Reagan and Mob vibes from Mob Psycho. Such a wholesome thing to say. Kobe is blushing not knowing why Garp would think that of him. We then see Garp use his galaxy impact. Probably the strongest move we've seen in the whole series. Holy shit, talking mushrooms. Garp jumps off his ship, which is up in the air. And throws an advanced conqueror's hockey punch, probably using Rio 2, and destroys all the plaza. Garp's fist didn't even touch the ground. He's all the way up in the sky. Shanks' divine departure just hit Kid and his ship. Garp's attack got the whole freaking island. Practically, that's what it seemed like. We see that hockey lightning and sound effects too. God damn. And remember what I said about the map earlier? Well, last chapter we saw Blackbeard's ship at Egghead. Is Lafitte there with Katarina Devon? We didn't see them in this current chapter. Well, La and Kid each went a diff direction of east. If Law managed to escape Blackbeard, he should be heading towards Elbath. He could possibly save Kid. If Garp managed to escape Hachinosu, he probably would have headed to Egghead to save Vegapunk, since Tashigi is with him and she owes Vegapunk for saving the kids from Punk Hazard by curing them. What we don't know is, did the Garp confrontation happen before the Law confrontation? Either Blackbeard encountered Law before he brought Kobe to Hachinosu or after. So did Blackbird see Garp or Law first? Either way, I'm worried about Law's fate. Even Garp isn't safe. Well, that was the chapter. A 10 out of 10. Probably the best chapter of the year. I loved it. If you like this video, throw a like and subscribe. Comment down below if you want to talk about anything related to the chapter or the series. Thanks for watching.